Okay, stats, this is section 5.1, probability distributions. Um, all right, just front and back side of the sheet, this is the first part of 5.1. We'll do the second part of 5.1 on Monday, but um, they've loaded you down with a few vocabulary words first. Um, so starting with a random variable. Usually a random variable is expressed with X, and it's talking about like, um, you know, for example, the number of heads that you get, um, heads when flipping 10 coins, okay? That would be like a random variable. Um, it, it tells me a, a certain amount, um, and it varies because, you know, when I flip 10 coins one time, it's going to be different from when I flip 10 coins another time. So random variable, it's by chance. How many heads do I get when I flip 10 coins, okay? A probability distribution is um, usually represented as a table um, representing um, the data of your experiment. So a table representing data of an experiment. So it would be like the probability of getting 10 heads, the probability of, or the probability of getting um, a certain number of heads, the probability of getting a certain number of girls when you have three children, whatever, okay? Um, a discrete random variable, uh, the words discrete and continuous. Discrete is countable, okay? I, we've been over this before. Countable means like you can count them, so... Um, the number of heads that you get when you flip a coin, the number of stars in the sky, even though that's a very, very large number and heaven forbid we ever have to count that, it is still discrete. Continuous means that um, basically um, your intervals are continuous. Continue. C-O-N-T-I-N-U-O-U-S, continuous. Um, so like if you have, um, when you're talking about body temp, okay, you could have 98.6 degrees. Um, you could have 98.61 degrees. You could have 98.617 uh, four, two, five, one, nine. Okay. You can have a bunch of different, like those decimals continue on forever. So continuous doesn't mean that like the stars in the sky go on forever. It means that the, the, the interval or the, the number between numbers is a continuous set. Like I could, I could round my decimal places out as far as I want to. Um, if I'm counting a number of heads in a set of flipping 10 coins, um, you know, that's not going to be a decimal that goes on forever. I'm going to be able to exactly count that versus continuous. Those decimals can carry on forever. All right. So when you're doing probability distributions, that's the, that's the title of this, of this section, probability distributions. Three things must happen. Um, you must have numerical, not categorical data. Okay. Um, so we're dealing with numbers here, like the number of heads or the number of boys or whatever. Um, whatever you're doing, those probabilities must add up to be one. Okay, so like the number of girls plus the number of boys equal a probability of one. Okay, when I add those up together. Okay, the probability of girls, probability of boys should add, to, add up to be 1 or 100%. Um, and then that means that each individual probability has to be between 0 and 1. So I have a um, 1 in 2 chance or a 50-50 chance of getting a girl. Um, or I have a 1 in 6 chance of getting a 4 on a dice. Okay, that's just saying that probability must be between 0 and 1. Okay, um, for probability distributions, we will not be dealing with any continuous random variables. We're only dealing with countable things for right now. Okay, so that's why they put this stuff into play. Um, we're only dealing with discrete things, okay, for these probability distributions. So the first one, uh, I'm talking about a coin toss. Uh, let's consider tossing two coins, okay? When you're tossing two coins, um, I could get... Let's see, a heads and a heads, 
a heads and a tails, a tails and a head, or a tail and a tail. Those are the combinations that I could get with two coins, all right? That means that if I'm analyzing and looking at the number of heads that I get, I could get zero heads. This would be the combination of two tails, right? Or I could get two heads. This would be a head head, right? If I got one head though, that would be the combination of heads tails and tails heads, okay? So if each one of these things happens one fourth of the time, okay, one fourth of the time I'm gonna get those different scenarios, okay? One fourth of the time I'm gonna get zero heads. One fourth of the time I'm going to get, oh, excuse me, uh, I'm gonna get two heads. One fourth of the time I'm gonna get zero heads. But these two add together to make that middle column where I'm getting exactly one head. There's two categories that I can, they can have that have exactly one head. So 25% of the time I'm getting zero heads, 25% of the time I'm getting two heads, but 50% of the time I'm getting one head because that's two different, two different categories that I could have, okay? So this is a probability distribution. So it's kind of taking this information and analyzing it together, okay? If we draw a probability histogram of what that looks like, um, you're gonna see that more and more, the more time I flip the coin, the more that starts to look like a bell curve. Okay, that's the direction that we're heading because we're going to start analyzing bell curves in the coming chapters, all right, and, and behavior that happens with those bell curves. So um, that's what my probability distribution looks like, okay? Um, I have us look at uh, another one for a set of like three babies being born, okay? So boys and girls, we can have, um, let's do this. I'm going to list them out. We could do boy, boy, boy. We could do boy boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, boy, girl, 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 boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, 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 boy, or girl, girl, girl. Man, I did a good job on that one. Um, again, we know that there's eight already because uh, there's two different options, boy and girl, and I'm doing that three times. So that is eight different options, okay? Now, if we put this information into a probability distribution, okay, what can what can happen is I can end up with zero boys and three girls, okay? I could end up with one boy and two girls, two boys and one girl, or uh, three boys and zero girls, okay? Each one of these things is happening one-eighth of the time. One eighth of the time, one eighth of the time, one eighth of the time, etc., etc. Okay, but this probability distribution completely like nixes out any order that's occurring. So basically, this right here is saying that a boy, boy, girl, and a boy, girl, boy are basically the same thing because no matter what, you're going to end up with two boys and one girl, right? So, so let's let's kind of put this in order. All right, so. Um, Zero and three, zero boys and three girls only happens one eighth of the time. It's only going to happen when this scenario happens. Okay, three boys and zero girls is only going to happen if I get a boy, boy, boy. One eighth of the time that's going to happen. Okay, so now if we look at the rest of these, the times that I'm going to get one boy and two girls, I'll put this in a different color, one boy and two girls is if I have. Let's see, one boy, two girls, one boy, two girls, one boy, two girls, okay? That's three-eighths of the time I'm going to get one boy, two girls, okay? And two boys, one girl, as a probability, happens here, here, and here. That's another three-eighths of the time, okay? So if you put this into a probability distribution, one-eighth is like 0.125. This would be 0.375. 0.375 and 0.125. Okay, kind of if we set it up like in this in this scenario, uh, the number of boys that we get, zero, one, two, and three, which would mean the girls would happen this way, um, would occur that percentage of the time. Again, if we do that in a probability histogram, do you see what's happening? Small, big, big, small. It's doing this again. It's doing that. Okay, so. That's, that's analyzing and putting that, that data into a probability distribution, okay? Um, I'm not going to talk about this part just yet. Maybe we'll talk about that when I come back on Monday. But um, the notation for zero plus, okay? Sometimes you will have probabilities that are really, 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 really small, okay? So, like, let's say um, 
skydiving. The chances of dying when you're skydiving. D-Y-I-N-G. Let me spell that right this time. Uh, dying while skydiving is um, 0 0.0004. Okay. So if I'm talking about two people dying, that's going to be 0 0.0000016. Okay which is very, very, very small, okay? So rather than writing out all those decimals, we can say that that's zero plus. It's so close to zero that it's like, doesn't even really matter, okay? So close to zero. Now, don't say that the probability is zero, okay? Because probability of zero means it's impossible. It's not impossible. It still could happen. It still has like a point. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 6 chance of happening. So we note that as 0 plus. Okay, it's really close to 0. It's on the positive side of 0. It's not impossible, but it's so close to 0. Okay? All right, example 2. Um, let me go get, oh, let me plug my computer in. Hold on. Okay, die here. All right, uh, hiring managers were asked to identify the biggest mistakes a job applicants make during an interview. So what they said was that 50% of people don't wear the right attire. 44% are late to an interview. What are you doing, people who are late to an interview? 33% um, have lack of eye contact. That's a big one. I see that a lot um, when I'm interviewing people for like FBLA stuff. 33% um, eye contact is huge. Uh, and I don't know who does this. 30% are checking their phone or texting during an interview. I think this data is like wrong because who would do that? Um, but the problem with this is this probability distribution, if you look at this, it adds up to 1.57 and that is bad. So based upon this data, um, this is not a probability distribution. No, not a probability distribution because of this number. It has to add up to be one. Now what's probably occurring in this scenario, I don't doubt whether you know these these numbers are accurate, except some of these just kind of seem wacko, but um, what's probably happening is somebody who wore the wrong clothes is probably a person who's also maybe texting. So maybe we have some people that are in this category and in this one at the same time. So they're counted in both places and that's why we're over 100%. But um, this doesn't represent a probability distribution if it's over 100%, okay? Okay, now, now to the tedious part. Um, don't get intimidated, intimidated by these formulas. It's not gonna, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. Um, when you're finding the average and finding the variance and finding the standard deviation, they give you two formulas for variance, which basically mean there's two formulas for standard deviation also, but we'll talk about that here in a minute and you're finding average. You're finding the average of this probability distribution, okay? Average or mean is, uh, you'll hear expected value also, okay? You'll hear expected value, okay? If I'm trying to find the average of this data set right here, what you will do is you will take your, your number here and you'll multiply it by the probability, zero times 0.25 plus 1 times 0.5 plus 2 times 0.25 and you will add all those up 0 times 0.25 is going to go away 1 times 0.5 is just 0.5 and 2 times 0.25 is another 0.5 if you add those up that ends up being 1 okay your expected value or your average you do that to find your average or your mean you would expect that if you toss two coins you would end up with one head Okay, that's what you would expect to have happen, okay? Sometimes you're going to get two heads, sometimes you're not going to get any heads. But if you toss two coins, you're going to probably expect that one of them is going to be a head and one of them is going to be a tail. That's finding the average, okay? So what we did here was we added up, that's the sum. Sum, you added up all of the x's, which are these guys, times their probability. We took zero, which was my x, times its probability. 1, which was my x, times its probability. 2, which was my x, times its probability. And we added them all up together, and that was our average, okay? So we're going to follow these formulas for variance and standard deviation, and we're going to do that for this, which is exactly this table right here. 
Um, the probability distribution of the number of heads when two coins are tossed. Oh shoot, I should have written that down here, darn it. Okay, um, when you're finding mean, mean is this symbol. This guy is mu, M-U, pronounced as mu. This guy is sigma squared. And this guy is just sigma for standard deviation. Those are your Greek symbols, okay? Sigma, sigma squared. Um, so we'll, we'll go through these. We'll find the average and the standard deviation. We already found the average, I guess. So when you're doing x times p of x, this is 0 times the 0.25. I'll write it in. That again, 1 times 0.5, 2 times 0.25. And if we add them all together, we end up with 1 as our answer. I did that over here. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. Mu is 1. Mu is equal to 1. Okay. So every time I'm going to use 1 in my formula when I do this over here. I'm going to take each individual x and I'm going to subtract 1 and square it. Okay. So each individual x, 0 minus 1, and I'm going to square that times the probability. We're finding the variance here. This is variance. Times the probability, 0.25. Um, 1 minus 1 squared times 0.5. Okay. 2 minus 1 squared times 0.25. Okay. And we're going to add all of those up because the sum right here, when we're finding variance, there's a sum. We are doing this formula, by the way, um, not this one. You can use that one if you want to, but this one is the one that, that's represented down here. This one's a little bit easier to compute. Okay. All right, so this one would end up being negative 1 squared, which is 1 times 0.25, or just 0.25. Okay. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 squared is 0. 0 times anything is just 0. And then 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 squared times 0.25. 1 times 0.25 is another 0.25. So my variance is 0.5. If I add these three together, the sum, my variance is 0.5. So my sigma squared is 0.5. Okay? Now, if I'm trying to find standard, oh, I'll write this out. The variance, this is mean, and then we want to find standard deviation. The beautiful thing is, and you should already know this, that if we know the variance, we don't have to do another formula for the standard deviation. We just basically take the square root of this number. So I'm going to take the square root of 0.5, uh, which I should know. I'm doing this video at home, so I don't have my capture right away next to me. Um, the square root of 0.5 is 0 0.707. I knew that. So the standard deviation is 0 0.707. Okay. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what standard deviation, well, we kind of know. Standard deviation relates to z-scores a little bit. That's how much your data is deviating. But um, we'll talk a little bit more about what that means um, again on Monday. Um, so for a probability distribution, mean, variance, standard deviation. That's what you have. Okay. Um, We've done standard deviation variance mean before um, with just straight data sets, okay? Um, but never before with probability distributions where you have like them weighted differently. Like this is weighted at 25%, 50%, 25%. So a um, little bit different, a little bit different of a formula. Don't let these formulas overwhelm you. They're super easy, super easy, okay? So um, you have three homework problems. The first two are just telling whether they're like discrete or continuous variables. Um, so are they countable or are they continuous? And then the third problem is going to be the one that involves doing this procedure down here. So um, those are on paper, not on the online. You're welcome. Um, so there you go. Get to working on those.